This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by... Now, Ed's been involved in the, the Tom Ball situation in the aftermath of it. He's held some, or helped hold some uh, protests where they raise concerns about this man who burned himself alive and protested the family court system in Keene. He says the school districts are required to have a parenting plan, or the schools are required to have some sort of parenting plan on file so that when there is an emergency like this, they know who they can call and who they can't. He also says that he called the principal, uh, what's her name again? Uh, Mrs. Frazier. Mrs. Frazier, uh, or he was interacting with her and asked permission to record the interaction, uh, and she refused to give it. So that's your tax dollars at work. You're, you pay her, but you can't hear her. <laughs> now, ideally, I would like to confront these bureaucrats, educrats, uh, over the phone. I probably won't be around during this next school board meeting, but I'd like to call them on the phone and record the interaction. But I'm not going to do that because I can be arrested for that. So I'm not even going to get their side of the story until the next time I'm at a Keene school board meeting, which could be a long time from now. So uh, in a sense, it's their loss. You know, it does save me time not having to make the call. I would, like I said, rather make the call and at least confront them electronically, but I'll have to wait until the next time I'm at a Keene school board meeting and I may not even get to the right bureaucrats. I'll have to stick with the superintendent maybe and some school board members and ask them at least about policy. The school district, have they done anything to, you know, to ameliorate? Well, what they've done so far is um, they've deleted this supposed note that was on file that no longer exists. Um, they've also... Uh, this happened when I began to interact with the school was on a Thursday. By Friday, my daughter was being interrogated by various school officials. I sent them a notice. It wasn't an official, lawful uh, communication, but I said cease and desist. Do not, do not communicate with my daughter regarding this matter. It's making her extremely uncomfortable. Um, and here's one of those areas where that's just, this is why I always ask school bureaucrats, do you allow students to videotape bureaucrats? And they almost always say no. And that's because you know, they're, they're doing stuff like this. They, you know, they, in, you know I, I don't know exactly what happened in your situation, but the, the interrogations of students, the uh, you know assaulting students and not letting other students videotape it, uh, it, it does happen, maybe not frequently, but uh, that's why the, the recording, the video is so important. You know, as I've dealt with this for almost two weeks now, going back and forth, trying to find some sort of resolution, basically, in my opinion, what I've asked for is I want a written, a, a written account of what transpired. You know, I want an apology. It's been determined that no such order exists. Well, put it in writing. Let me rebuild my credibility with my own daughter because that's obviously been destroyed. When you have a state agency saying something's wrong with your father. So this, kind of, this has put a, a wall between you and your daughter to some extent? To some extent because she's aware that I have been pursuing this with the school officials. Um, over the weekend, I've made multiple phone calls and also text messages that she would not return to me. And when I finally did get a hold of her, she did tell me, Yeah, Dad, since you've been in the school, um, various teachers have been questioning me about this. This has nothing to do with teachers. My daughter, this is an adult matter. You know, this is less to do with my daughter. This is to do with my relationship with the school. So it did push her away. She doesn't, she's afraid to talk to dad about something that happened because she just wants to go to, through school sort of unnoticed, un, unsingled out, I guess you could say. But if she were to try to record that interrogation, they would do something bad to her. I don't know what it would be. Well, Taking the camera? Or, I mean, I'm guessing, you know, that, that, that uh, the Keene School District does not allow free use of cameras in the schools. And I believe that she does have a cellular phone that it's their per policy that they're not allowed to keep them with them throughout the school day. They're required to stay in a locker. Yeah, I shouldn't have said they can't bring them, but they do, they're, they're going to be restricted in using them. Yeah. Now, the, the, the biggest point of this is as I've dug further into the situation and I'm finding no relief, I have asked various school officials when I'm talking to them can I record your response to this? And they flat out have told me no. Well, you don't ask them if you can record. And I'm I mean, and unless, well, if it's, all, if it's over the phone, then it's more dangerous. But, um, but yeah, in person, in public, it's all you. You're dominant. You've got the camera. You don't turn it off. 
Well, here is a, a, a twist to this. I mean, after multiple attempts over um, a period of a week to, to speak specifically with the nurse um, and find no relief at the Keene Police Department, I decided to visit Troop C, uh, State Police Barracks. An officer who seemed generally concerned uh, came out and spoke with me. We spoke outside. While talking to him, my phone rang. Um, I recognized the number as a school number. And I said, you know, I apologize, but this is important. I mean, this is relating to what I'm explaining to you. So while, when I answered the phone, it was the school nurse calling me, and basically I hear better with the speaker on, the state trooper was within earshot, overheard the entire conversation of her admitting that there was an order in the file. It's not there now that she's returned to work. Now, the school is almost, in my opinion, trying to throw the nurse under the bus, saying, well, she misinterpreted well, at least she called you. She did. And yeah. I, frankly, I this is a conversation I mentioned earlier. If she acted in what she thought was the best interest of my child, I, I respect and appreciate that. If she saw a note and she says, I'm not allowed, I mean, my child, anybody's child, if there is a, a parent that could cause harm and there is a lawful court order, then I believe they're doing their job that they're intended to do. Okay. Now, there was no such order, and the nurse now says there is no longer a note here. The officer overheard that conversation, so mm -hmm. there, there is some, while not uh, actual video or audio of that conversation, I would like to believe a credible individual overheard that mm -hmm. and did tell me that he would make some notes in, mm -hmm. in his own. Where I wasn't able to get a, a, an official police report, I do have an officer through the state level, state police, that overheard sort of my point and uh, I, I want to believe that he's genuine and it did cause him some concern. It's just up to me now where I go from here and what I've asked of the school is a written apology. This will enable me to sit down with my daughter at some point and just say, sweetie, what the school told you, whatever you think about dad, it was bad information, it was false information. You know, Maybe she needed to hear it from them too. And I did. I asked between myself and my daughter. I think it's important. But I've also asked him not to talk to my my uh, juvenile about this without mm -hmm. myself or I said a lawyer present. You know? Yeah. All right. I think it's proper procedure. Government schools. It's never going to end well. Absolutely. All right. Maybe for you personally, but the old, the overall story won't end well. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com believes Keen is the best destination for pro-liberty activists like you. Keen is an exciting and challenging ground floor opportunity. Visit move.freekeen.com and read over 108 reasons to move to Keen. Help us free the beautiful little city of Keen from the clutches of the government. Learn why you should move to Keen at move.freekeen.com.